Hey Royals, this is part four of why or how I got into international real estate. And so we left off with part three talking about how um, my family who was the power of attorney for my grandmother after she took out a reverse mortgage is now trying to essentially get money out of us. So <laughs> here we go, all right? So um, when my grandmother took a turn for the very, very worst, she was in and out of hospitals like all the time. And at a certain point, she actually did move out of the property and in with her son and his wife. And so we didn't know that with a reverse mortgage, if the person moves out of the property, that means that you now have to either restart payments on the house or you have to give the house to the bank. That's how reverse mortgages go. And so there were like people coming and knocking on the door, obviously from the bank to try to see like where she was. And we never let them in. We never let anybody in to be honest. But <laughs> Yeah, we never let them in. Um, and I think that at a certain point, they were just like, there's no way that we can continue doing this, my uncle and his wife. And there was a whole blowout. I'm not gonna rehash my whole family's issues on this social media. But essentially, some things happened. Some arguments happened, some disputes happened. And then my grandmother actually did pass away. Now, before she passed away though, I approached my mother three years before she actually did, and or two years. It was 20, uh, 2016, she passed in 2018, so two years. So I went to go and talk to my mother about it and my mother's solution was, oh, well, when it happens, I'll just go into a shelter. Like, we'll just go into a shelter. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Like, that is usually the response that if you had absolutely no time to do anything or no time to get yourself together, that, yeah, that obviously would be the answer because essentially you'd be homeless, right? So you should go into a shelter. But my grandmother in 2016 wasn't that bad. She was like very in and out of hospitals, but she was still conscious. She was still speaking to us. She was still coherent. And so, but the frequency of her going into the hospitals had increased. So I knew that she wasn't gonna make it. And I told her, I was like, I don't think grandma's gonna make it past 2018. And I don't know, it was very, it was very weird. Like I just said a very objective date or year. And um, I don't know, I just felt in my bones that 2018 was gonna be the year, right? So I said, hey, what are we gonna do? And that was her response. And so I said, hell no, that's not gonna be my legacy. That's not how we're gonna continue my great great grandmother's legacy of owning property and owning, you know, something in America and being the first black family on a block. Like that, that means something. But when people have the poor mindset, they don't understand those things. They don't understand legacy. They don't understand the power that you actually have. And if you're financially illiterate, you don't understand math, okay? So with a original brownstone, there is a lot of equity built in there. Even if you do a reverse mortgage, there's still equity in this property. And you can absolutely capitalize off of it without selling it, but no one understood that. And so we're gonna talk about that in part five.